and welcome to the first podcast of Seeing Shadows. Um, this is going to be a podcast where I talk about my um, my abilities as a um, spiritual medium, how I got them, uh, what I've done with them, and. You know, I was going to start with a whole introduction on how I got my my abilities um, the day that it happened, but there is a earlier podcast um, on that that I did last year. I can I'm going to do an updated version of it, but until then, if you want to um, listen in to uh, what happened and how I got my abilities to go back on, on my playlists and into my podcast and you, you can find it. I think it's called How I Became a Spiritual Medium. And I thought I was going to do, uh, to elaborately, elaborate on um, that a little bit more um, on this first one as the Seeing Shadows, uh, under the Seeing Shadows title. But I wanted to talk about, because a lot of the questions that I do get from other people is, don't I get scared? Don't you find this scary? For the most part, I don't find it scary. I mean, I've been living with this now for, I mean, I'm 50. I got my abilities when I was like six. So I've had, I've dealt with this for a long time. Now, I do get scared, yes. And the f one time that I was truly, truly scared out of my mind is what I'm going to talk to you today about. And it's called the darkness. And it's called the darkness because that's exactly what it is. Um, uh, the time that I was truly scared was from a dark shadow. A dark energy and we had um, my wife had reconnected with an old college friend who um, had remarried or had been who was married blah 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 anyways we were there we she wanted to go down and visit for a week so I took a week's holidays this was going back about six years ago now and um, so I, you know, the kids were still quite young then. Um, so we all gathered up and we took off for a week um, down to down to this person's place. I'll, for the sake of this, I'm not going to say his real name. Um, so I'll refer to him as Bob. <laughs> So we all took off to Bob and his family's house for a week. And uh, when we first got there, everything seemed to be, be all right. It, there was just an odd feeling um, throughout the first night. And it wasn't until the second night when um, where we stayed at his house was in his um, is a big uh, RV, and we 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 stayed in there as um, as a family. And um, the second night, um, my oldest daughter, who has these abilities as well, her and I kept hearing knocking on the side of the camper. And um, I went outside to look, and sure enough, there was nobody there. Because we thought maybe they were just playing tricks on us. But there was nobody there. And the knocking, it wasn't ongoing, but it was periodically, every once in a while. And it started to really freak my daughter out. And um, <laughs> my youngest daughter didn't hear it. My wife didn't hear it. It was just me and my oldest daughter. So we... We, we put up with it. Every once in a while, I'd go outside just to make sure there was nothing going on the next night. The next day, I talked to Bob and said, were you knocking on the RV walls? And he goes, no. 
why would I do that? And I'm going, well, I thought maybe you were just trying to play a joke on us. And he says, no, no, I never did. So we, the next night, of course, it has to happen again. And I went out to look, and we didn't see anything. And um, and it was just it was an ongoing thing until um, the second last night is when it finally showed itself. Now, I'll give you a bit of a backstory on um, Bob. Bob, um, I don't know what he is like now because I haven't seen him in years, and this is one of the reasons why. But he, Bob was very tormented, and it was one of the reasons why was because of this dark energy around his property and around him. My, I guess, um, him, my wife and some friends in college thought it would be a big joke and play around with a Ouija board. And, um, well, they brought something forward. Um, I'm not going to say the spirit's name, but they did bring him forward, and he's been attached to each and every one of them ever since. And he's a negative energy, and he has been controlling the narrative of their life ever since, including my wife's. And it's something, you know, and I've said this before on an earlier podcast, that playing with Ouija boards, they're not a toy. And if you don't know how to use them, and if you don't know how to close the door properly, there's going to be consequences. And in this case, there was, or is, and it's still going. It's an ongoing issue. I've, I've done a good job with keeping negative energy out of this house. What it hasn't been easy, and it's taken its toll on my health. Um, but I finally got to this point where uh, at this house that yes, there are spirits around, but they are positive; they're not negative. Now, this particular night, when I saw the dark energy, it was it was a hot night. You know, I remember I was laying in bed with Emily. I can't remember exactly what time it was, 10.30, 11 o'clock at night, maybe a little later. But we were laying there, and the energy around the place was very negative. Um, Bob's attitude sucked um, to the point where it was affecting my family. Something was said by him towards my youngest daughter, which blew up, and I was ready to, the next night I was taking my family home with me, and um, and he lives, God, let's say four, four hours away from where we live, he lives more up into the northern part of of Canada. Or Ontario. And the whole situation that night after his blow up at my family, and then my blow up at him for blowing up at my family, it was a tense, tense situation. In the negative electricity that you could feel around the property that night was through the roof. Um, my wife couldn't feel it. My youngest couldn't feel it. But my oldest and I knew what was going on. And before I get into what happened that night, there was another instance where there was a death years and years ago of a pregnant woman that she drowned herself in 
the lake because he lives on waterfront property. And um, I remember standing at the end of the dock thinking that I should jump in. I can't swim. I haven't I never learned how to swim ever since I watched the movie um, um, Jaws and um, the movie um, Tentacles. Oh, and that's another story, a tale for another day. But I never learned how to swim. I was scared of water. But here I was standing on this dock, and this voice in my head kept telling me to jump. I finally walked away, and my daughter, my youngest, was walking with his oldest doctor down towards the water because they were going to go for a swim. And I looked at them. I looked at my youngest and right in her eyes, and I said, beware of the water. And at that moment, she jumped back in fear. And later on, like, I, and I felt different um, and I, because I was being channeled. And um, my youngest jumped back, and later on she told me that my eyes were pitch black when I said that to her. And, um, and Bob's oldest confirmed that as well. And it took me uh, um, about half an hour later to, to finally feel more like myself. But they never went down to the water after that because they, they heeded my warning. And if you've ever been channeled, it, it's, it's a different sensation, different feeling when you're not really in control of your body. And in that particular instance, I wasn't. And it's happened a few times since then. That was, I'd say, the first time that I was really fully channeled. So going back to this this night and this, these circumstances leading up to this point, you know, Bob was drunk. He was being an ass. My youngest daughter, who said didn't want a baked potato for supper, and she said something about it, and he blew up at her, and then my young, our oldest blew up at him, and then he blew up at her, and then it was like a domino effect of everything that was going on. And here we are, we were supposed to be on vacation. And my family was being treated like shit. So I blew up at him. We had a bit of a flare up. And during that whole time, I I was ready because he because we were on the second floor of the house. And during that moment where I was was yelling at him, I wanted to throw him off the roof or off the second floor. I was ready to, and he's a much bigger guy than I am. That energy was inside me, that negative energy, and I was ready to go for it. And I held myself back, and it took a lot of energy out of me. There's other things that was wanting to be said, but I held back because I. It would hurt the other people around, and I wasn't into, into doing that. So I made a decision that night that I was going to take the kids home the next day. And that night, we were laying in bed, my wife and I, and we heard the banging again, the knocking against the walls of the RV. But this time I didn't go outside. I thought, you know what, fuck it. I'm not going to even give it any, any type of acknowledgement. And as I was laying there that night, I was staring against, I was just staring at the window in the RV, and all of a sudden something caught my eye, and it was a black shadow, a full-length shadow person looking down at me, and it was huge. The, the, its black shape was, was, was massive, and its white eyes were staring at me. And I looked back at it. 
And I kept staring. We stared at each other for, for a bit. And in my head, I said, and what do you want? And then it was, it was very eerie. It was so, so much silence around me. And this thing just floated off to the right of me or to the left of me and through the walls towards his house. And I jumped up out of bed and I walked outside. And I said, that's all you got. You come at me like that and you just stare at me and then you're going to walk away like a coward. Well, after I said that, it stopped. And all of a sudden I felt this pressure in my stomach like someone had just kicked me in the gut. And it almost made me bellow over in pain. And, of course, everyone's looking at me. My wife came running out and I said, you're a coward. That's all you are. You're a coward. And I watched the shadow go back up towards the house and it disappeared. That scared me to the point where it's one of the reasons why I, to this day, six years later, I have not gone back to the house. My wife is there this weekend um, after when the COVID restrictions were up. She she needed to get away. She wanted to go up and visit him and his family, which is fine. Um, but there's there's I'm never ever ever going to be going back to that house because of the negative energy that surrounds the building. And plus, I'm not a big fan of his neither, because he did that to my family. And there's been other things that have come up about him as well. And he's been at my house a couple times to help. Um, we had put up a big, um, we call it the dog house, but it's it's like a patio kind of thing in our backyard. And, um, and each time he's been at our house, there's always been that negative energy surrounding him. And it's taken, it took me, a long time to get that energy out of the house um, by form of um, meditating and, and um, chanting and, 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 and so forth. And he'll never be back again. I, I, this is just, I, you know, I'm not as strong as I used to be um, dealing with with this particular evil entity and other evil entities throughout the years you know I am not as strong as I used to be in that aspect of the spiritual world especially right now I don't know why but my energy level is very very depleted I'm going to need the moon soon to sort of the last full moon really helped me gain the energy back but she wanted to go back this weekend, and I said to Emily, my wife, I said, you know what, if you're going, you need to go and protect yourself, and you need to protect, um, you, you don't bring anything back with you. So I gave her some instructions with um, some white sage. And I gave her a chanting spell to keep the negative energy out of the car on the way home and out of her out of her body. And um, I'm hoping that works. I have no every uh, every confidence in the world that it will. And I so I said to her, I said, "You need to be forceful when you're saying the uh, the chant. Don't say it half-assed. Say it like you mean it." Because you don't want this thing following you, and I don't want this thing following you. You know, she's already had enough negative stuff and bad stuff happen to her in the last six years that um, we don't need that anymore. We don't want that anymore. We need positive energy. We need positive light. And that's what I have going on in this house. So for her going there, and being in that atmosphere. And she's not going to notice it. 
but there's going to be little things that's going to happen while she's there. I'm not going to get into too much detail about it, but there's going to be little things that are going to happen. And I said to her, don't invite the negative energy. Go have fun. Have a visit. But just be careful. So, dealing with a dark shadow entity like that, it does take a lot out of you. Um, you're, they're called, like I call them energy vampires. You know, when people say do vampires exist, yeah, they exist, but they're not like fanged, you know, creatures of the night. They're evil spirits who, who zap your energy. Empaths have the worst time with energy vampires. My wife's a vam- an empath. I'm an empath. So you re- really need to ground ourselves and to help protect ourselves. I don't want to ever go through that ever again with that negative energy because it was, to this day, I st- I st- when I think about it, it scares me. And I've been to different houses and, and different, you know, visits. And I've, I've helped other people deal with, with spirits and ghosts. But nothing, nothing ever prepares you for dealing with a dark shadow. The darkness, as I call it. It's not something to be taken lightly, and it's not something to joke about. It's not something to put off to the side to forget about. There are light and dark. You can't have one without the other. I I grew up Catholic. I was not a practicing Catholic. Because I don't believe in one particular God. What I believe in, I believe in positive and negative energy. Like the day that my mom, the night before my mom had passed away, in the day of her passing away last year, I saw I saw angels in her in her room they were floating in the sky these white amazing positive light entities were there to help her to guide her into the light she wasn't ready to go at that time but a particular night um, she didn't go to the next day but I saw them and I can't explain the for like a week and a half after that I felt euphoric I felt alive I felt it was like a dreamscape almost that kind of feeling so and then there's the other side where the dark energies you can't have one without the other You can't have light without the dark. It's just a matter of fact. It's a fact of life. Um, And unfortunately, I've had to, I've had to deal with shadows, the darkness, before. But the darkness at Bob's place, around his around his house, around his, 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 circling his, the water, his, his, his property, is negative energy. And how we deal with that, that there's, you know, there's different ways to deal with it. I mean, I've dealt with it with, with 
positive energy and, and, and positive chanting and um, positive thoughts. And I've also had help with, with my spirit guides. But up to the point when I, because when I found out on the Monday last week that she had planned on, my wife had planned on going up to visit, I made a decision on Tuesday because I have wanted to talk to her before about um, doing a, an incantation, a chant to cleanse herself before she came home. But it, it hasn't been up to just recently when my wife's been really understanding of my abilities and, and what what happens in the spirit world. So I haven't really, I've had to deal with it on my own after the fact when she comes home. And this is the first time that I've, I've had her deal with it herself. Because it, it is her, it is their negative spirit that they brought into this world. Um, so I hadn't have been having a hard time sleeping at night um, leading up to her leaving because it knew that I had made the plans to have her take care of it herself. And it started to attack me at night in my dreams. Last night was the first full night's sleep I had all week because it was draining my energy. It was attacking me because it didn't want me to do that. But after when um, I gave her the stuff, showed her how to do, deal with it, and after when she left, it's out of my hands. And it didn't bother me last night. So I had a perfect sleep last night. It was awesome, finally, because I was exhausted. I feel great today. My wife messaged me this morning, and she's having a good time. She had a good visit last night. She'll be back sometime on Monday. And um, let's hope that um, her self-cleansing will, uh, will do the trick. I have every, every fiber of my beating knows that it will. So, that's all I had to say. I have to say about um, the darkness. If you have any questions about, um, about anything that I've said, feel free to ask in the comments below. And I will answer to my, my best ability. And going forward with the Seeing Shadows podcast, I'm going to talk about different... Um, I'm going to continue to talk about different... Um, uh, house visits and um, different times that I've had to help find missing people and um, I got one coming up which is quite heartbreaking but and it'll be in two different parts there's a happy ending and a sad ending and that will likely be my next one so until then Take care, everybody, and thanks for um, tuning in and listening. And um, again, if you have any questions about, uh, about anything that I've just talked about, feel free to, to ask in the comments. Okay, thanks now, and bye-bye.